What is up, you guys? I am finally getting around to doing a garden tour. Um, it's been a long time coming, um, so I wanted to show you guys what's going on in the gardens right now. Um, I think I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna have to flip the camera around, so hold on. Okay, so I just planted these tomatoes uh, last week. I actually had to replant this one and this one because the rabbit got out and he just like bit him off and they were little stumps. So I replanted them. Um, let's see what we got here. So I have the varieties in here. That's a Berkeley pink tie dye tomato. This one is an Amish paste. This is a Rutgers, which is a storage um, variety. I guess I should give a little background. Um, so the Berkeley pink tie dye is an heirloom variety. It's got a lot of really lovely colors. Um, it's like pink and yellow and orange. And um, I've never actually grown it, but I got seeds in a seed swap last year. So super excited about that one. Um, Amish paste, that's a paste tomato, kind of the shape of a uh, aroma. Rutgers is a storage variety for um, just like pastes or um, like diced, diced, sorry, I'm losing my voice, diced tomatoes or whatever, you know, like spaghetti sauce or anything like that. Um, this is a black cream. This is another heirloom variety, a slicer type. Um, it's a really dark purple tomato. This one is a speckled Roman, which is like a red, orangish, I guess, um, and yellow striped tomato. And this one is beefsteak. So um, another slicer tomato. Also really good for storage and sauces and stuff. Um, not as good as the Rutgers. The Rutgers has like minimal, um, like the gooey stuff. I don't know what it's called. Like the, um, like the juicy gooey seed slime that's in tomatoes. This has minimal of that because it's better for sauces and um, things like that. And then let's see here. So in this bed, we've got some peas in the corners. I got some nasturtiums. These are all storage onions, um, reds and yellows that I sewed in a flat. And then I just transplanted them into here in clusters. Um, I saw, can you guys be kind of quiet? Cause I'm taking a video. Um, I saw a couple of folks this season doing this cluster sewing situation um, or multi sewing. And um, some of them are a little more drastic than others. You can see there's a ton in there. Um, but basically, they have a lot of space in between the rows and they will grow all together like that. And um, they'll have all this space around to kind of spread out. And I will start harvesting them probably from the center. Um, the parts that are more closer together as they get a little bit bigger so that they have more space to grow out. But uh, kind of a new idea that I'm trying. So I just thought I'd see how it goes. Let's see here. We've got, these are peppers. So this is a nata peño. That's a habanada. Those are heatless jalapenos and, and habaneros, which um, I like spice, but I also want my kids to be able to reach up and eat peppers without having something that might hurt them. These are two tomatoes that I didn't have tags for. Um, I think that they might be cherry varieties, but I'm not quite sure. Look at these hooligans. They're grabbing some mustard. Are you going to eat that or are you just plucking it because you feel like it? Pluck a leaf. Okay. Um, and then we have some red lettuce. This right here, what is this? You know, I'm not actually sure what that is. It kind of looks like sorrel. Or maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Sometimes I'm really bad with labeling stuff, you guys. Uh, these are Ruby Perfection cabbages. That's a, a red storage variety cabbage. Um, I planted cilantro, that's what this is, um, all over in the beds because I love cilantro. This is a broccoli rob I got from a friend, but it bolted. Um, I have been liking to eat the flower clusters before they open. I love um, brassica blooms. They are so yummy. Oh, pulled that whole thing out on accident. But the blooms from the brassicas is um, 
they're really yummy. Especially if you're trying to prevent your stuff from going to seed. Um, but I let a lot of this go because we don't have a lot of flowering stuff in the garden right now. And so I wanted to have some sort of something for the pollinators to munch on. This right here is a cucamelon. Oh, a cucamelon or a Mexican sour gherkin. Never grown those. I'm excited about it. We got more peas. There's a pickling cucumber. More broccoli, Rob. So I'm just going to pull this out when, um, when I'm feeling ready for it. I also have some other little cucumbers sewn in here. You know, those might actually be loofah. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I got some lilacs that I still have to plant over here. This bed is mostly just greens. We've got, this is a beet green. My sister-in-law went to Scotland a couple years ago and brought me seeds back. And this is the beet greens. They call it leaf beet over there. She got me seeds from a monastery which is really cool because monasteries have really great gardens. Um, so that's kind of sentimental. I'm going to let this go to seed. I've been eating on this already, though. We um, like to chop it up and put it in our eggs. It's really good in a scramble. Um, always kale. This is a blue kale. I'm not sure what. I think it's called dazzling blue. Um, I have more peas in the corner. I have a sunflower here. There's even, I think, where did it go? There's a cucumber in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Duh. Um, peas in the corners. There's a bunch of cilantro, as you can see. I have so much cilantro seed, you guys, from... Hey, don't pull out the plants, please. That's not very nice. Look at this dirty little hooligans. He's got raspberry smeared across his face. Look at that. And some toothpaste on his forehead because he got into his... I'm my shoulder. He got into the toothpaste. I'm my shoulder. Yeah, you are so dirty. <laughs> Look at this raspberry oh don't hit the camera that's not nice okay sorry my children were getting a little out of hand with the harvesting and they were just ripping things out so i had to pause and give a little talk on being nice to garden plants <laughs> so we got a ton of blue kale um a ton of cilantro like i said i have so much cilantro seed for my last garden um there's a little nasturtium in here that's not doing so hot it's kind of stuck underneath here for those of you that don't know nasturtiums are an edible flower that are really great for um the bringing in the pollinators and beneficial insects uh, i just started planting them a couple years ago but the leaves and the flowers are edible they've got a nice little spice to them okay what am i doing here so we got more marigolds this is sorrel. I really love sorrel. I saw it in a friend's garden a couple years ago. And it's got a really nice, like, ze I don't know. I wouldn't say zesty, but, like, maybe kind of sour. Spencer thinks it tastes like apples, like green apples. Um, it's like, yeah, it's kind of sweet, but then also sour. It's really yummy. Um, then we got some garnet mustard which I absolutely love. I love mustard. This is another thing that we like to eat the blooms from. It's nice and spicy. Also really good in greens or just sauteed. Here we've got some Swiss chard, I think, coming up. This is a red veined sorrel. So that's another kind of sorrel. That one doesn't taste as sweet as these ones. This is also it right here. So you can actually see what the leaf looks like. Oh, someone's mad at their tractor. And yeah, they have like a nice sweet and then sour thing going on. So they're really good in salads. It's basically just snack time out here while I'm videoing this. Um, more cilantro. Okay. Um, not sure what this is. It just popped up in the bed and I'm kind of curious. So I'm letting it go to see what it is. Tons of cilantro. I'm going to actually be able to harvest that soon. It's getting a little too hot for cilantro. It's going to bolt anyways. So we'll come through here and harvest all of this out to make room for other stuff. I got a little tomatillo here that got super leggy. And, um... 
clip that leaf off. I'm not really sure what it's doing, so we're just going to let that go. I also have leeks here. This is another thing that my sister-in-law got for me in Europe when she was there from that monastery. Um, so I love leeks, but, you know, um, I'm probably going to let these go to seed so that I can actually... Oh, that one's not looking so good. I'm sorry, my children keep interrupting me. First it's destroying the garden, then it's begging for pizza when there's dinner already in the kitchen. <laughs> children are so funny. Anyway, so these are the leeks that um, I planted from the seed my sister-in-law brought me from Scotland. Probably another thing that I'm going to let go to seed because this is not going to be enough leeks. A lot of them died. Probably won't be enough leeks for me to really get anything from it. So we'll let that go to seed. There's more um, Swiss chard coming on. Right here I have a big bunch of bush beans. Those will be um, beginning to flower soon, hopefully. There's actually a nasturtium stuck in there somewhere, but it, it oh, look at that. We've got a little fish friend. <laughs> That's one of the funny things about having kids near the garden. There it is. Yeah, it got lost below these beans. I don't know if it'll get it up here. Maybe it'll get some sunlight. Ugh. Um, there's also a bunch of borage in here. Um, I let the kids take some seeds and plant some borage a while ago and they just stuck it in where I had already planted seeds. So the borage is struggling to find the sun too. Another nasturtium. These are nasturtiums Murphy started inside in like February and uh, they're not looking so hot, but they're alive. We got some zinnias, um, brush strokes, violas. Look at those, they're so cute. And then there's more cluster sown onions in here. Looks like we got some weeds I gotta pull out. Here's another tomatillo. Another lilac I have to plant still. Um, two more tomatillos in this one. This is a little row of runner beans. Um, my goal here, let me back up a little bit. My goal here is to have two cattle panel trellises Look at Wilco Mischief taunting the neighbor's rabbits. He's such a stinker. He just got out. We'll have to catch him. Two cattle panel trellises um, connecting these two beds so that things can climb up and over them. Um, I just keep slacking on getting the cattle panels. So I got to try to get that done soon. I just noticed this. We've got some bug activity going on for sure. This bean did not... The shell didn't completely come off. I am going to have to figure out what is eating my plants. I've been having a lot of roly polies, which um, I know I can treat with diatomaceous earth, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Um, we got another little pea and a nasturtium in the corner. Looks like, see, something came and just bit the top off of that. Oh, I'm not doing a very good job at positioning my camera correctly sorry guys um there's an ant on that one but they don't really mess with stuff like that so i think it's the roly polies they like to eat baby plants once they're established they don't really mess with it too much but they really like to munch on little sproutlings so probably gonna have to come out here with some de and get that taken care of um so here is a bunch of beets. There are yellow beets on that side, red beets on this side. Um, I'd have to look back in a previous video to be able to see exactly what all this is for sure, but I know that these are radishes. We got some little baby radishes coming in here. Um, there's some marigolds. We got a little marigold right here. Um, there are turnips and radishes and what else? I'm having a terrible memory. This is what I get for not labeling stuff. But there's just a bunch of root veggies in here. Um, the cats came in here and dug. And I've been having to regulate the cats like crazy on these beds. Because all they want to do is poop in them. Um, and stuff just got kind of mixed up. So we'll just be harvesting that as it goes. And then we'll replant all of this. This is a mesclin blend that I planted and all of this needs to be harvested and eaten. You can see there's bug damage, um, which isn't that big of a deal. 
if you're eating naturally grown foods, they will have holes in them. Not a big deal. We're fine with eating food with holes in it. Um, so yeah, that'll be all harvested really soon. There's another nasturtium and more peas. This side was all lettuce, this little like block right here, and none of it germinated. So, oh, I guess like a couple little tiny ones did. But I am going to plant tomatoes all along here as kind of a fun little garden experiment because I'm not going to stake them or trellis them. I'm just going to, I am just going to let them hang over the edge and kind of just like jungle situation it. So, um, I'll do that here soon. Plant some tomatoes in there. Then I'll show you guys this last bed. So this one was our first bed that we planted. I've already taken a lot of stuff out, cut it to the rabbit. Um, this is, oh my gosh, it's just totally escaping my mind. Oh, I'm gonna have to look on a seed packet. Um, there's more radishes, there's a cucumber. This is another thing that volunteered in here. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty and I'm letting it go. There's a bunch of carrots, some purple bok choy, um, some weeds. That is a lamb's, a lamb's quarter. Um, there is a kohlrabi right here. It's just starting, there's a couple more, just starting to create its little root. Um, bunch of carrots that will be harvested later. I have a sunflower. Planted a bunch of cucumbers along here. The same kind of idea. I'm hoping that they just spill over the side and kind of vine down. Um, I have some chamomile and then bee balm right here. I also planted two pumpkins in here. Uh-oh. Shoot. Oh, I love my children. I love my children. I love my children. That is going to die. And look at this fun little lettuce that blew over from the in-ground bed. This is gardening with kids, guys. This is why you plant more than what you want is because that's going to happen and it's going to happen a lot. Okay, so you saw my raised beds down there. It's a work in progress. <laughs> um, now I'm going to show you this in-ground bed we got here. Okay, so I planted all of this the last month of my pregnancy. Um, don't mind all of the children messes everywhere because, because kids. <laughs> so this is mostly bachelor's button. You can see this like greenish gray foliage. That's all bachelor's button. But then we have zinnias. This is a snapdragon. As you can see, there's a little, little snaps are ready to go. We got more zinnias over here. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I did not plant this. Um, so I'm just letting it go to see what happens. This is an aster. We got some lettuce, um, some weeds. <clears throat> um, let's see what else. You can see there's another snapdragon here. Um, all the bachelor's button was from my own garden back home. So, and then the snapdragons are stuff that I started from seed. Um, this whole clump right here, except for that stuff, that's mustard. But all of this, this stuff, that's all yarrow seed that was from my old garden. It's um, sown way too thick, but um, I'm gonna come in here and probably thin it a little bit. But it's still looking really good and hopefully breaking up some of this clay dirt, it's so heavy. And then all of that is mustard, a variety that I grew the last few years in Oregon. That's all my seed. And then this is all lettuce right here. This whole patch right here that I've been harvesting on already is lettuce from my old garden back home. Same with that one. Um, that one was lucky enough to get put all by itself. It must've just blown over here from when I planted the seed. So it's not as close together as all that stuff. There's another cute little head of lettuce. Um, so we've just been harvesting all this stuff as microgreens. 
Um, and then it helps thin it out so that the other heads can kind of actually mature. And then mustard too, I've been putting that in our scrambles also. You can basically put like any type of greens in your scrambles. Obviously lettuce would be kind of weird, I feel like, but um, mustard, beets, Swiss chard, kale, all of those taste really good in scrambled eggs. We just um, throw down some butter and scramble the greens, or um, saute the greens in butter first, and then add the scrambled eggs. Um, this patch is meant to be my three sisters garden. It's looking pretty sad right now because like a ton of the corn didn't even germinate. So like all of this right in here, poor germination, um, and then right there, really poor germination. This, These are all um, uh, popcorn or um, corn meal varieties. Um, and then I had Spencer get me some sweet corn varieties and that I'm going to just plunge in all around to fill out this corn section of the Three Sisters so that I can get the beans planted. Um, I don't really care if they cross pollinate. I'm not trying to save corn seed this year. I'm just trying to grow the corn um, for eating, not for um, not for replanting because corn um, is really um, susceptible to cross pollination. So if you have corn varieties this close together and you're planning on saving seed, they're not gonna be true to their parent type because they'll cross pollinate. But if you're just eating them that year, it doesn't matter. It's just if you're trying to save the corn seed and you want the corn to be true to the to the parent plant, then you want to plant them separate or do something else to prevent them from cross pollinating. So after I get some more corn sown in these little gaps around here, I will plant beans around the corn because um, that's how the Three Sisters works. You do corn, pole beans, and then pumpkins or squashes, vining varieties. So I have pumpkins and squashes, um, gourds, and watermelons in here, all vining varieties, not bush varieties, because a lot of um, squash varieties are actually bush bushing varieties. So these are all vining stuff that I planted in here. You can see I kind of did it sporadically throughout here. They're not really, there's no uniformity to this. I just kind of stuck seeds in here. I came in actually today and put a few more in so that, uh, I just made sure I had what I want. Um, and then what else we got? What is that? Oh my gosh, what is that? <laughs> you know what that is? I bet you that's from the kids. <laughs> Sometimes I'll give the kids handfuls of seeds and tell them to plant it wherever they want because I just don't really care. And most of the time, they'll just plant all the seeds in <laughs> one clump. So I think that's what happened right there. Those look like carrots. Um, and then these are zinnias. And then we have a row of, let's see, these little ones are cauliflower. And then Brussels sprouts are the big ones. This is a whole row of orach or mountain spinach. They also call it perennial spinach. This is another thing that I put in our egg scrambles. Um, it tastes really good. We just had it the other day and we really liked it. Um, I got this seed from a friend. Look at This is what happens when Wilco Mischief gets out. And this is another reason why we plant more than what we want because more than likely something or someone is going to come along and whatever. But I do have a lot of it so I don't really mind that much and we would be feeding it to him in his cage anyways. And he spends so much time in his cage at this point that uh, whenever whenever he gets out, we, we try to give him like a couple hours. It's usually one of the toddlers that lets him out. So we give him a couple hours to kind of sow his oats in free range. Um, and he's really cute to watch eat lettuce, honestly. Thackeray Binks. Here's a little tail update. I don't know if you guys have been following for a while. <laughs> Thackeray Banks broke his tail. Something tried to get him last summer and his tail broke off because it got dislocated and then uh, died and then the end fell off. 
and it's finally growing its hair back. It's been <laughs> like a year. You're a good kitty. Um, and then finally over here, hello mischief. Finally over here we have the garlic. These big patches that are missing right here are from where Charlie chopped them down. Um, naughty dog, they're playing make believe. Charlie's a dog. Um, this is just garlic. It's not looking so hot right now. The kids have ripped so much of it out and cut the tops off and they like to harvest the greens and use them in their potions, which I don't care so much about that, but Charles cut the tops off of a bunch of them and some of them I think have died. But anyways, that's the garlic. This is also fun over here. Um, this is our compost pile and some pumpkins are growing out of it from our pumpkins from Halloween last year. Okay, over here, these are all bushing variety squashes, butternut, and I think one of them is a Pantheon and one might be a Black Beauty. Um, we got some dill right here. I absolutely love dill. There's something so whimsical and just like beautiful about dill plants. Love it. Um, couple times kinds of mint and sage some rosemary with some nasturtium in there here's one of my roses that is a yellow variety I'm not quite sure what the variety is I'll have to look um, grapes I have a green grape and a Concord grape I think this might be the Concord it hasn't um, it hasn't come up yet but I'm confident that it will there's zinnias and watermelons planted in here some squashes on the back side. This is my other grape, and it has finally popped up, so that's pretty sweet. We have plans to build um, a pergola around the deck, so that's why I planted these grapes here. Um, so hopefully they will climb up the pergola. Um, some more squashes. There is a bee balm and a blanket flower or gallardia. This right here is my hollyhock bed. Um, it is so hard to be patient when something is gonna take a couple of years to actually come to fruition. Um, Spencer and I thought it would be fun to plant hollyhocks right outside our bathroom window because hollyhocks are also called the outhouse flower. So back in the day, um, when women felt it was impolite to ask where the bathroom was, people would commonly plant hollyhocks around their outhouse so that no one had to look for the bathroom. They would just look for the hollyhocks. And so we thought that would be kind of funny to uh, plant hollyhocks outside of our bathroom window. But it is so hard to wait. Hollyhocks are biennials. Um, and unless you buy mature plants, they're not going to flower their first year. So these are all things I started from seed and some of them actually died. We had two more right here that died. Um, these are doing good. And then we have more of there. So I, I planted some sunflowers. There's a sunflower there and one here and there's a cucumber there just because I wanted something more in this bed. And um, I threw more hollyhock seed down in here. But I think I might plant something else right here in the center because I would just like to have more things growing here and to kind of maximize our space. Um, so yeah, um, down here we've got a um, clematis. Sorry, I just totally blanked out. I'm not sure how good it's doing. We got, this one looks like it's doing really well, but this one is not doing so great at all. I was kind of hoping that it would like vine. Yeah, that's dead. I think that's probably why right there. I was really hoping that it would like vine around some of this stuff. Um, so that would be kind of fun. So we'll see what happens. There is some sort of cucumber or something right there too. I've just been putting seeds everywhere, you guys. I just put seeds. I sow seeds recklessly because I just want plants. Another rose. This one, uh-oh. I wonder why that happened. Um, this one is looking so good. I'm so stoked about it. And then I planted some calendula. 
around, but it's getting torn up by bugs. And then another rose, I swear. I might as well just call these garden tour and mom cleans up the kids' messes because I'm always picking things up when I'm walking around the garden spaces. And then down here, we have potatoes in one of my um, gorilla pots because I just want to be able to dump the potatoes out instead of having to dig for them. So I thought that would be fun to do. So yeah, there we go. Okay, so here is my green stock leaf planter. Oh, trying to turn it around and it's not wanting to go. Um, so this is the leaf. It's got the smaller sections. These are only seven inch deep. This is the new one that they released this year. Um, we got some asters, chamomile, dill, and then a Bells of Ireland, which I love. And then I planted a bunch of root veggies all around. We got beets and radishes. Um, there's basil, mugwort, more basil, a thyme. And then there's peas all along the bottom, either peas for eating or sweet peas for flowers. Look how messy my deck is. Oh, I swear I should have just cleaned the deck before I did this, but whatever. <laughs> for the sake of authenticity, sometimes this is what my deck looks like. Don't judge me. I do have five children. <laughs> and sometimes life is just a little bit messy, so. Whatever. This green stock planter looks gorgeous. I also have nasturtiums all around. I let the kids just push seeds in wherever. And then over here in this one, so this one was originally planted um, with strawberries. I'll have to tell this story sometime, but when I was in labor in the middle of the night, I planted my bare root strawberries in this thing. And I think that they got over watered and died. Some of them started and were doing really good and then just like wilted and died. This is the last one that's in here and it just, these were alive yesterday and they're dead today. And I think it just got over watered. Um, I'm kind of getting to know how to water the green stock planters a little bit better. Um, so I pulled all of the bare root strawberries out and just replanted it with other stuff. So I've got a ton of peas up here that are going to that are flowering right now. So we'll be eating on that and then we'll pull those out so we can plant other stuff in there. And then I've got a ton of different basils. I've got the purple opal basil and um, I think it's called Mrs. Bell's citrus. It's a citrus basil. Um, so there's more of the purple and more of the citrus. This is another um, cucamelon, Mexican sour gherkin, gherkin. These are all borage that are in here. There's another cucamelon. We've got more peppers here, another um, zinnia, borage, nasturtium. There is a ground cherry. I absolutely love ground cherries. This is the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. I grew it last year. They're like candy, you guys. Serious garden candy. Um, tomatoes, different kinds. I think these are all cherry varieties. There's um, Brad's Atomic and um, Lucky Tiger. More peppers, more borage, another zinnia, and then I have sweet peas down here and some more nasturtiums. So there you have it. And then we have like a ton, we have a ton of tomato starts still. I am going to be planting these hopefully this week in the raised beds, in some pots, and then in my little garage side bed that I'll have to show you guys another time. We've got a bunch of petunias. I absolutely love petunias. They're really fun to grow. Um, dill and garlic chives. More nasturtiums and borage. That's everywhere. Um, we got a cilantro that's about to go to seed right here. A Thackeray Binks. Trolling around the garden as always. Okay. That is all. Thank you guys for hanging out with me in my garden and my messy backyard and deck. Um, and uh, hopefully you got some entertainment out of the toddlers traipsing around in the background and being ridiculous as toddlers are. Um, 
I'm gonna try to hopefully do some garden tours once a week if I can remember to get around to it. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my little urban garden tour here at the Gardner Homestead. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'd love to talk to you about gardening stuff. And uh, we'll see you out there.